Okay, so today we're doing, we're going to look at sketching the graph, so stating their x and y intercepts. So what you need to remember, what do we, what's the main fact about the x intercept that you should remember? What hap yeah, so what happens at the x intercept, what does y equal? Zero. Yeah, so if you always remember that the x intercept y equals zero and the y intercept x equals zero, that's the thing you should always say to yourself because it might help you when you have a problem, they might say that and that will help you interpret what's going on. So to sketch, um, yeah, a linear graph. So let's have a look. Sketching a straight line graph, we need two points. You only need two points. So what you do, it's a little bit like dot to dot. You get one. If you've got two lines, we just need to draw them up like that. So um, when you are doing these graphs, though, now when um, you're getting marked, you'll get marked a lot harder when you get to your 12 on your graphs and how they, so you'll lose marks if they're not done properly. So you really have to start remembering that um, axes need to be labelled. So if it's a practical application, it might not be X and Y, yeah? It might be volume and time or something like that. So you've got to make sure you're um, labelling axes. Coordinates would be labelled if you've had to talk about them. And also you should really always talk about intercepts and label intercepts. So you're gonna have to remember to make sure you put all your information on your graphs when you do them. Okay, so when an equation is written in the gradient intercept form, it can be like this. We can also, we like to call this the gradient intercept form too. Yeah, it's the same thing. So here, what's the y intercept for this one? A, yeah? They're just used, and what's the gradient? Yeah, B's the gradient. So just they've just used those letters, that's fine. Okay, um, so one point tells us. So if we go through this, um, sketch this graph, let's go through that one and we'll do it together. So I'm just gonna make this a bit bigger so you can see. All right, so for the following, state the gradient, um, the X and Y intercept and the angle it makes with the positive direction um, of the x-axis. So, and I think they didn't write sketch it, but hopefully we can sketch it as well. Does it say down there? No? All right, so let's go. So first of all, we want to state the gradient. So finding the gradient, you want to rearrange it to look like this, don't you? Yeah? So I've got 2x plus 4y equals 12. I'm trying to get one y by itself. So I'm gonna move that x over, which would, the two x, sorry, which would become what? Negative. Yeah, good, minus two x. And I haven't moved the 12, so that's still plus 12 there. Okay, now I'm gonna move the four, and what's that going to do? Divide. It's gonna divide, good. So I divide everything by four. So it could be written like that, or that's the same as saying this plus 12 over four. And you can do those, can't you? Because what's negative two over four? That's negative a half, isn't it? Yeah, and 12 over four is? Three. three. Okay, so now you know, here we can see the gradient is what? Okay, negative a half. When you're looking at this, when you now work out your gradient is a negative, you should be thinking your line's got to go down ways, wouldn't it? Yeah? Think that, right, that's the way my line should look because that will stop you making silly mistakes, yeah? If you think, all right, it's got to at least look that way. All right, so you've got the gradient. Now, you already know the y-intercept, don't you? There it is. There's the y-intercept. And we also need, so we've done that and that. We also need to find the x-intercept, yeah? So remember when I said x-intercept, we can always just remember it's when y equals zero. So into the equation they originally gave me, I'm gonna put y equals zero. So it'd be plus four, zero equals 12. So four times zero is zero, yes? And so what's the x-intercept going to be? Good, I heard someone say it, what was it? Six. six, good. So here's your x-intercept. So the coordinate of the x-intercept is what? If I ask you for the coordinate? Six, 
Yeah, six comma zero. Good. And what about the coordinate of the y-intercept? Zero. Zero three. Good. So if we have to sketch this, we've got our two points, don't we? So you just go zero three. You don't have to worry about act. You know, like um, what would you say? Uh, dividing up the axes evenly. Not if you're. See how I wrote what the coordinate is. As long as I'm in the rough right area, that's fine. So I'm going to do, and I'm going to do the y, um, sorry, the x-intercepts, which we said was six and zero. So I'll make sure I'm in the positive section of x, but that's the main thing. And then you get, look at this, I've got a ruler. See, I'm not lucky. So you get your ruler and you draw your line through your points, yes? And probably also I should be labeling this because they haven't labeled that. Okay, and we like to also put the equation on our line. Now it doesn't matter which formula you write. You can write that one, oh sorry, or you can write that one, it doesn't matter, yeah? Because it'll just help when we do simultaneous equations. Okay, let's do this one and let's do, let's draw the graph and do everything um, and label everything that we did before. So if I'm just looking at it, what's the y-intercept for this one? Because it's in, three. yeah, good, it's in the three. So if that's the y-intercept, what is the coordinate of the y? Yeah, you've got to be really careful in the test. They ask for the coordinate and kids often forget that that's what's asked. So you don't get the mark. If you'd written y-intercept equals three and they've asked for the coordinate of the y-intercept, you don't get the mark, okay? So I'm trying to prompt you to make sure you're hearing that, yeah? And yeah. you think about that when you read the questions. Okay, so the x-intercept, let's find that one. That is obviously when y equals zero, yes? So I could say zero equals three minus six x, and I could bring the six over there because I want a positive, and x equals three divided by six, so x equals oh. half. So you can do that. So what's the coordinate of the x-intercept? Oh. Half and zero, yeah? Now this is, which way? This is a negative gradient, isn't it? Is that true? Yes. Gradient equals negative six. So I want you to think that it's always a line like that, yeah? In your head, think about those things. This is what helps. If you want to know what makes a better method student, they're the ones that do the analytical problems because obviously all the other ones, it's pretty easy, follow rules. So that's what <clears throat> we think when we're reading things. We think about what it looks like so it helps us solve them. Okay, <clears throat> so off I go. And I'm going to pop in my dots, which was 0 and 3. Remember what I said? It doesn't matter about the scaling. As long as I've done that, I get my ruler up. And I'm just changing the colour for you. You don't have to. Like that. And what's missing? There's still a few things missing. Formula. Formula. Good. Formula. And what else is missing? Excellent. Excellent. Done.